Hi, today I want to talk about the ESP32 and some adapters I use and what's the pros and the cons of the usage of the one or the other. First of all, you can start by using the raw module and like me solder some wires around the module and stick them all together in a breadboard. Then you also need some kind of reset button and flash button for GPIO pins zero and also you need an USB to UART converter to program and debug the module. You can use the CP2102 with an external voltage regulator or you use the CP2104 that provides enough current for running my ESP32s. So maybe you give the CP2104 a try or you use the FTTI adapter. Next step can be you use a solder adapter like this with some buttons already soldered to. So you just need to solder the module and also the included pin headers. That's two row pin headers in 2.45 millimeter pitch. If you want this adapter for a very small project, this is very compact, but this two row header have a big disadvantage if you want to use it in a breadboard because it takes two rows and the most breadboards have bridged the neighbor pins. So if you want to stick this in a breadboard, then all of your pins are bridged together and you cannot use the ESP32. Next, we can use a PCB design tool like HiCat and build our own solder adapter and order them in a PCB board house and wait maybe some weeks for delivery. But then we can also solder our module on this PCB and maybe a voltage regulator and also some buttons for flash and reset. And if you penalize this board, then you can can also maybe have some other modules with a compactor format and you have also a solder adapter for this. So we here we have an example for a ready soldered module without the pin headers. But unfortunately I've destroyed this module with my heat gun so it's not worth to solder any pin headers around the corner. And here we see two ready made adapters with pin headers sticked into a breadboard and as you see the ESP32 module is very wide so the pin headers need to be in a very big distance for a breadboard and I have to use this kind of breadboard arrangement because if you use only one single standard breadboard then you only have a space for some wires on the on one side and not on the other side. So that's a little disadvantage of the usage of this module. But as you see, I just use two breadboards and most of the breadboards came with two power lines on the side and I just take out or cut out one of the power lines. And as you see, the breadboards are have some kind of nipples on the side so they can clip together. And so I just clip two breadboards without one power line together and get this arrangement to use use the ESP32 adapter in a breadboard style. And we have enough pins to stick the jumper wires to whatever pin or GPIO pin we like. But certainly we just need a USB to UART converter and I just mentioned I use the CP2104 so I can just power up my ESP32 and also program and debug the module. And for me, it's a good idea not just order one of the pin header. I just order just a batch of maybe 100 of the pin headers with 40 pins and just cut them into the lengths I need. 
And if I'm lazy and just want to use a voltage regulator, I just use this ST-Link version 2 programmer and just use the 3.3 volt output of the ST-Link. Just as you see, if I open this up, there's just a voltage regulator inside and I use this one. And it's just get its power from the 5 volt line from the USB port. And here we have a closer look to the CP2104 I use if I don't need a voltage regulator because this module can provide in my experiment enough current for the ESP32. But the CP2102 just reset if you want to use the 3.3 volt from this device. And next we have an adapter with already the module soldered onto and also the CP2102 and also voltage regulator included in this module. But to use this we need an USB mini cable not included in the adapter and on the one side we have the standard USB header and on the other side the USB mini to plug into the module. And also not included if we want to use this adapter in a breadboard, we have to solder our own pin header to the sides of the adapter. And here you see some ready-made adapters and in the single breadboard we have the same problems like our own adapter. The module is so wide that there's only one row of pin connection to plug in our jumper cables or DuPont wires. And this adapter breaks out all pins of the module. So for obvious reason, if we compare this with our own adapter, all of the sizing and all pins are just the same as mentioned before. But for beginners, this is easier to use because you just need an USB mini cable and can start. And if you want to use it in a breadboard, you just solder the pin headers on and just can start without any mess around with a voltage regulator or some buttons or what have you. And just for a comparison, this is the CP2102 and it's the same chip soldered on the adapter with some smart arrangement for auto reset. And here you see a bunch of voltage regulator. It's the same type that's soldered on the adapter. It's, it's the AMS1117 chip. And also the same that's used in the ST-Link version 2 or maybe in some of the clones that are around. And here is also a closer look to the two buttons, the reset button and also the boot or flash button. And at least for today I borrowed a adapter from a friend just for this video. So I have to give it back without destroying it. And you also need the USB mini cable to use this adapter. On the bottom side we have some power pins and the analog outputs. And on the top we have our digital pins or the GPIO pins for digital. And also a slot for an SD card. And if you compare this with the previous adapter, we also see there is the CP2102 chip and also a voltage regulator. We have our two buttons. And if we turn the adapter around, we also see there's also some solder points for other GPIO pins and also 3.3 volt and ground. But we don't have every GPA open. So this is an adapter if you are a beginner and it's very easy to use for you. But you don't have any GPA opens. But for the most cases this is not necessary. And we have also a connector for a rechargeable battery. So this is maybe also if you have a mobile use case. And just one additional tip for you. If you plan to use an adapter with a breadboard, just, just order some of the jumper wires or also called DuPont wires. And it's easier if you have also some resistors and LEDs in your stock. So I hope you enjoyed the video and learned something. And please
please support my work to bring my video to a wider audience by giving me a thumbs up and also write some comments. So thanks for watching today and bye bye.